and thank you for visiting Green Tech Heat Solutions. Right now, we're very proud to announce and show you our new ePro eradication heater, specifically designed for the heat treatment of bed bugs and many other indoor insects. It's a powerful combination design that we have both a 3500 CFM fan built into the back alongside a 21,500 BTU heating system, all in one design ready to go out the door in one handle. No more combining, taking second trips to have your fan and your heater together. We've combined them and it's also thermostatically controlled. It has six elements on it that are seven amps each. And let me give you a closer show of that. Okay, well here we are giving you a quick close up. As you can see it has six separate elements that are controlled separately by a 120 volts with a standard 120 volt cord that can be plugged into any wall unit that's 120 volts, 7 amps each. We give you a lighted in and recommend lighted in power cords. This is 12 gauge. So each one's controlled separately. Also this unit has a 3500 CFM fan inside the back end combined with 21,500 BTUs of heating power right here as well as it's thermostatically controlled so you can set your temperature at a maximum and when it dips below that number by a couple degrees it kicks the power back on and then it brings it back up to that and it keeps it at that temperature the whole time. This is the new ePro eradication heater. Let me do a quick demo. We're going to turn it on. Turn on our power. Kick on the fan. Turn on our heating elements ready for heat treatments. This segment, I want to go over about three basic ways of doing a, a, a setup. A very brief way to give you an idea of how you set up inside of a unit, a typical apartment that we're in here today. And I'm going to use our E-Pro eradication heater and our AM4000 air mover. But first I have a few other tips to go over and I'd also like to mention that the thorough detailed training is what we really recommend. We have a full training that's based off of our heat treatment field guide that was written by Dr. Michael Linford, the CEO of Green Tech Heat Solutions. And he also worked many years of uh, doing research at the universities for a lot of this information that's in this book for the methodology that Green Tech Heat uses. And that's documented here and our training follows this and this is what we give certification from in this type of training. But for now, and I encourage you to go to that, that page or ask a Green Tech Heat representative more information about the training. We also have a digital version and we have live at your own facility available. But do we recommend that you go through the full field treatment uh, field guide and for your training. This is a light overview of how it basically looks in a setup. But first, there's a lot of considerations. There's challenges. Some places are mostly empty. Some places are heavily cluttered. You might find the differences there. Clutter is an animal um, where you have piles of clothing or boxes uh, with clothing in, in them, and there's all kinds of challenges there. But first, I'm going to mention that you want to achieve uh, bed bugs are dying at approximately, you know, from 120 degrees on up. We recommend that you heat a room to around the 130s you know, with our electric system, 130s on up to, you know, the 150s uh, you could be at, but that's all you need. They all start dying. The adults die rather quickly at these temperatures of, say, the, you know, in the 130s. You'll see them and would come out and you start searching for areas and they drop off and die. But it's the eggs that take four times as long to get to, and as far as to kill those eggs so they don't come back. So. We're going to say that we, we have to heat up a room to temperature, and once we get to that temperature, we're going to maintain the temperature. So to be clear, when I say, okay, 135 degrees, it doesn't mean that at the time you arrive at 135 degrees that you're done. No. And in fact, you arrive at the 135, 140 degrees uh, plus mark, uh, and you want to heat, uh, we call it heat saturation, um, heat soaking, if you will. Heat, to heat soak the room for another couple of hours and depending on what you're going after it could be anywhere from two hours to a six hours on the max side but typically between um, two three four hours you're going to add do you arrive at the temperature but you want your temperature to be everywhere 
not just a little here and there because they will see carbages of cooler areas and I guarantee you I've seen it done where they slowly find maybe a cool path. Typically in corners or behind objects you might find it and there's some other challenges with rooms or buildings that are might have cement walls and cement flooring where it's cold there but as an example you might have a box that's so big filled with clothing and uh, the room temperature could be 150 degrees that inside of that box might be 85 the same would go for possibly under some carpeting against the wall. You might have a nice hot temperature in the wall, but these bed bugs maybe are going along a little bit along the carpet. And by the way, they don't typically go underneath your entire carpeting. There might just be a little fringe area, a few inches that are off the floorboard. But um, so you're looking for that. Also, that watch my tips on what to look for. There's feces and things like that that could have along the floorboard to give you clues as to what you're looking for. And look for my tips on that. And um, so I want to say that the air ambient temperature and what you're targeting can be uh, two different things. So make sure you, you want to um, heat soak the room for a while once we achieve temperature. Also now airflow. Uh, the circulation of the air or creating an air vortex going in a circular motion is what you want. And your fan is your friend in that. Your fan's going to be like a conduit. It's going to pull the heated air and shoot it into another direction or pick it up from a bounce. But the idea is a circle. Uh, to circulate the air cyclonically, vortex, what do you want to call it? So you don't have dead areas and corners around, and typically it's like a corner that you might have an obstruction there and you're spining out that you can feel that there's not much air. A little uh, funny tip is sometimes we use a little tissue paper, literally, and hold it when the fans are going in the room and might hold it in the corner. If it's not blowing fairly decently, then you're not getting enough circulation. You might have some dead air in that spot. And you want to make sure that all those locations, open closet doors, open drawers, and we're going to, I'm going to show you how you separate pillows and you move things around to make sure that you're getting a full circulation because circulation is the key to success. So, um, like I said, the full detail of everything we do is documented in our full digital training and I want you to uh, take a look at that for us. So for now, okay, I'm going to do a quick setup of just how it would look running down a wall, then what you would do with the sofa and the bed. We'll go for that right now.